The last few videos on the channel focused on Fire Emblem game development. It's been a fun journey, and honestly, who knows if it's done. We've been looking into files not meant for human consumption, from KT oversights and workarounds to a bunch of cut content and an exploration into Fates' development. This time, we're looking at bugs, annoying, beneficial, and game-breaking ones that are in three houses. Given the sheer amount of content in this game, working on a new slash old engine from a developer not named Intelligent Systems, there's actually quite a bit of bugs in this game. I'm sure there are a lot here that you didn't even know about. Some of them even surprised me too. So without further ado, let's destroy three houses by breaking the game utterly. Game Breaking Bugs The Wall Gambit Crash this glitch is easy to perform, but requires a bit of setup to pull off perfectly. Basically, if you use a gambit to destroy a breakable wall, and a monster not only happens to be caught in the AoE attack, but also has all of their remaining barriers broken in the process, the game will crash once both wall objects break at the same time. Triangle Attack Wonkiness it's possible, through some weird oversight, to execute a triangle attack with none of the units involved even having the combat art equipped, which can lead to some weird shenanigans happening. To execute this, you need three flying units, but one of them needs to be on a Pegasus or Falconite that has mastered the Pegasus Knight class but doesn't have the triangle attack currently equipped, while also having a bow that has more than three uses left. What you do next is set up the flyer's positions for a proper triangle attack, as in adjacent to the enemy targeted. And when it's time to move your Pegasus slash Falcon unit, you choose to attack with the bow and use the XY buttons to change your vanilla attack into a combat art. In due time, the triangle attack will pop up as an option and you'll be able to use it. Though interestingly, the glitch will still happen should you change your mind at the last second and switch to attacking normally. The weird shenanigans come up from the fact that this glitch has three different outcomes depending on some factors. If the enemy can counter you, only they get to act. Or, if animations are turned off and the enemy can't counter, the level up screen will appear but nothing will happen. Afterwards, your unit will have either wasted their turn or trigger Kanto depending on how much they moved. Or, if animations are on and the enemy can't counter, the game crashes. Annoying Bugs Monday Mission Skip Bug This glitch sucks, and the fact that it's so easy to find makes it even more so. As its name implies, if you skip to a mission in the calendar and said mission happens to take place on a Monday, like Chapter 3's mission, the game will flat out skip the last week of instruction as if it never happened. Reversal Gambit Bug Long story short, the Reversal Gambit, meant to rattle foes targeted while switching places with the first goon in the row, is bugged should it connect with two enemies. Depending on whether the main target dies or if you're able to swap places, a lot of stuff may happen. If the target does not die, as of version 1.1.0, your unit will swap places with it if possible, but the other enemy won't be rattled. But if it's not possible to swap places, for example, the enemy is a flyer and over a wall, then the gambit will work as intended. If the target does die, you won't change places but the second enemy on the row will get rattled as it should be. Also, should you swap places with the enemy, only the north side of the target will be rattled, as in the default camera angle the map has, so it's possible to rattle literally nothing. Should you not be able to swap, however, then the gambit will work as intended. Weapon Accessory Bug in the case of one of your units has two accessories on their inventory, and the unused one is above an unequipped weapon, should you choose to use said weapon without swapping accessories, the battle forecast will display the outcome of the battle as if the unequipped accessory was factored in, which the game will force to happen if you attack. For example, let's say my unused equipment is a silver shield and there's a weapon below it in the inventory. If I choose that weapon to attack, the game will force me to equip the silver shield, as I act and thus tank my attack speed. And the only way I can prevent this is by either moving the shield to the lowest spot in the inventory or by trading it to someone else. The Cutscene Docking Bug As the name implies, should you switch your Nintendo Switch from handheld to docked mode while an animated cutscene slash movie is happening, the game will refuse to detect any sort of controller input whatsoever that's not the screenshot or home buttons. The only way to get around this is by going into handheld mode again. Lord and Hubert's Authority Experience Bug after a certain point in Crimson Flower, Azure Moon and Vernet Wind Roots, Chapter 12 for CF, and Chapter 14 for Azure Moon and Vernet Wind, the House Leaders plus Hubert will have their personal C-ranked battalions automatically equipped, or sent to the convoy, in Edelgard and Hubert's case, should they be on a flying class. To ensure this, if the game checks their current authority level is below C, it will automatically raise it to this level for compatibility's sake. However, due to an oversight, if their authority is higher than C, their current rank will remain the same, 
but any skill points they might have earned previously to unlock their next authority rank will be wiped out from the moment they get their unique battalions. Therefore, if you're interested in the skill optimization aspect of the game, you might likely want to keep this glitch in mind from now on. The Fallen Star Status Bug Truth be told, this bug is more of a visual one than anything, but it can cause some serious confusion given the text provided by the game isn't 100% clear on the matter. When the Fail Knots exclusive combat art, Fallen Star, is performed, the unit is given the ability to, and I quote, avoid enemy attacks in the next combat. In practice, this translates into Claude dodging every attack launched against him during the first round of combat he faces during the enemy phase. The bug in question comes into play with the icon displaying the Fallen Star status, as it remains present during the whole enemy phase instead of fading out once activated. Suffice to say, it's really easy to end up with the impression the effect lasts far longer than it actually does, which is not the case. So next time, be very wary of this if you want to expose Claude, or anyone with the Regan Crest item in New Game Plus, to a horde of enemies. Beneficial Bugs New Game Plus Loading Screen Bug after beating the game, if you use a previous save file that saved right before clearing the last chapter, but before the S rank and credits happen to start a new game plus file, on that new file, every loading screen that shows the mini Byleth sprite running around will be replaced with the Crest of Flames loading screen used for the credits. Not exactly game breaking or anything, but it does make the game load faster. Which is silly, but also convenient. Infinite Dancer Experience Bug Self-explanatory and pretty much broken at the same time, but there is a way to have dancers gain XP endlessly with the correct setup. To do this, the smart end option needs to be turned off and the enemies have to be unable to end the map. After that, the dancer needs to dance every turn up until 10 turns have passed, which is usually where the game stops them from gaining EXP via dancing. Around this point, you move all of your units and activate the auto battle option to wrap up the turn. This will actually reset the counter dancers have to prevent auto leveling, which allows you to repeat the previous steps until the 99th turn, allowing dancers to become busted. Monsters in Fog Bug even though Fog of War is meant to hide the location of enemy units, monsters included, when hovering over one of your units in a map, sometimes it's possible to see their barriers below the fog. The reason behind this occurrence is currently unclear, though I would be lying if I said it isn't very useful for certain maps. Infinite Month Bug this one was discovered quite recently, and it cannot be understated just how much it breaks the game, given it can potentially repeat many months of the game for infinity and beyond. To execute it, you need to be on a month in which the final mission is not on its final day. Then, right before you choose to begin any day you might be currently in, you select the option Skip Today, but while holding right on the analog stick. It can be tricky to get right at first, but if the process was a success, the day listed in the calendar that will be skipped towards will be the one right next to the one where the month's main mission is listed. Afterwards, you choose yes, the month will go on as usual, and Byleth will do a complete loop after reaching the last day of the month, at which point you're taken right back to the first Sunday available. It's important to mention the bug is not exactly consistent overall, even when it appears it might initially work so you might have to try and reset multiple times until it works. Silence Bugs Regardless of what the battle forecast and animations might tell you, silence simply cannot miss. When possible, aka against any magic user that isn't a boss, silence will always seal the opponent's magic even if it misses, which works both in the player's favor and against it for the rare maps that contain enemies with the spell. Another weird aspect about the spell is that it considers it an offensive magic spell, which means it will make use of some skills such as seal skills and even poison strike on targeted enemies. The HP overflow glitch that kills Hegemon Edelgard when she's on her throne. For those unaware, the means in which Three Houses calculates healing via heal slash fort tiles uses a very specific formula that makes use of an 8-bit integer, which, in simple terms, has the side effect of limiting the maximum number of HP possible to 255, meaning any value over that causes an overflow and forces the result to go back to zero. While this isn't an issue most of the time given very few enemies have HP near that amount, for the ones that do, such as Hegemon Edelgard in Maddening Difficulty, who has 199 HP in her last health par, this formula can easily end up screwing her over in the long run, as by dealing exactly 3 damage, the formula will fail to heal Edelgard and will drain her HP to zero.
And speaking of overflows, Infinite Money and the renowned DLC bug. This glitch makes use of the Pagan Altar located in Abyss, so having purchased the expansion pass for the game is a must. Also, at least 65,600 renown is needed to perform the exploit, meaning that a New Game Plus file that has gone through multiple playthroughs helps a lot. While the formula involved isn't known so far, it has been discovered that an overflow in values is caused when you use renown to purchase items, in very specific amounts usually so the renown spent is closer, if not exactly, to the value listed previously. This way, by purchasing, for example, I don't know, 94 killer axes or 82 silver lances, the actual renown spent to get those will be ridiculously lower to the one the game initially states, usually around 50 to 600 renown. Afterwards, you can use the items to get even more renown and thus repeat this method as much as you can by offering them in the pagan altar. Alternatively, you can simply go to the surface and sell the items obtained for money. Other bugs and glitches. In the battle War of the Eagle and Lion from Azure Moon and Verdant Wind, the event in which Edelgard sets up the central hill on fire can bug out slightly under specific circumstances. Namely, and, as far as it has been currently tested, if you recruited Petra back in part 1 and use her to kill the generic Imperial General replacement in this map, the game will force Edelgard to set up the central hill on fire twice and repeat the dialogue used for this occasion. Adjutant follow-up animation cancel. This is a weird one, in the sense that while it is documented, Documented, the reason or means to trigger it are unknown. The simple gist is that while having an offensive adjutant equipped, the animation they use when they attack your targeted unit sort of glitches out and lasts longer than expected. Nothing major, but still baffling to see it play out. Monster Death Animation from Critical Hit if a monster is killed via critical hit, and the attack animation used to do so involves the unit hitting it more than once, the glitch will force the monster to die on the first hit while your unit can still be seen attacking it in the background. Odessa's Death Quote Bug In Verdant Winds Chapter 22, there is a minor Agarthan general that introduces that mission's poisonous swamp gimmick, provides Nemesis constant flying demonic beasts reinforcements, and was even given a unique death quote after being defeated. Despite this and, due to an error, his death quote can only be heard if he's defeated while the map's combat animations are turned off. Special and Honorable Mentions To end things off, I will mention a few glitches and oversights that were a bit notorious during the game's initial release, but were patched out later between updates. Let's start with a big one. During the first 4 and 5 months of the game, Agitant follow-up attacks were bugged. For those unaware, as of the last update, the frequency of Agitant follow-up attacks is determined on the support level do both units have. For example, if they have no supports, the activation rate is 10%. If they have C support, then it's 20%, if it's B, 30, and so on. However, due to a bug present in the base build, the offensive adjutant always had a 10% activation rate if they were paired with a unit with whom they had a plus or minus support level, such as C+, plus, B-, minus, and so on. Azur Moon's version of the mission War at Grondor used to be a bit buggy when Hilda was involved. The general gist is that, if she was both recruited and deployed for this map, via Divine Pulse Abuse, it was perfectly possible to have her enemy self appear as an Alliance reinforcement rather than having a generic Alliance General take her place, meaning there would be two different Hildas on the battlefield. Not only that, if the player's Hilda was deployed but as an adjutant instead, the enemy would end up using someone else's portrait somehow. Meanwhile, while Verdant Wind's version of that map wasn't as broken as Azur Moon, it did contain one notable oversight. Dimitri initially used the incorrect portrait for that battle. He would appear without his baggy eyes, which, in the context of Azur Moon, is used to indicate that he had finally turned over a new leaf and abandoned his thirst for revenge. This was later fixed in the 1.1.0 update. Finally, and on a related note, Dimitri's own paralogue quickly began to become infamous at launch due to a glitch the map had when trying to save progress during its preparation screen. For one reason or another, doing so would corrupt your save file and force you to start all over, which screwed anyone who didn't happen to have a backup or had saved prior to the map's prep screen. The Ashen Wolves Death Scream glitch. Every unit in Part 2 uses a specific death scream when defeated in Part 2 while playing in Classic mode as if they actually die, and this voice clip obviously differs depending on the voice pack the game is currently using. 
the Japanese and the English ones. In spite of that, the Ashen Wolves had the dubious honor of being the only characters in the game who will always use their Japanese death screams when killed, even though English ones were recorded and do exist in the game's files. That will wrap things up for this week's Fire Emblem video. If you liked it, please show your support by liking and commenting down below your thoughts. Did you know about these glitches? Are there some that you know that weren't listed here? If you're watching this video and you're unsubscribed, please consider doing so. I'm working hard towards the ultimate 100,000 subscriber goal for the channel, and your simple contribution helps to get it there. I also want to thank my patrons, Parnholm, Melissa Farmer, and Adelaide and especially my $40 patrons, Fur Muzzle, Michael Taylor, Prime Fusion, Sleepy Sky, and Steven Rupp. If you want to support me through Patreon, please check out the link below. We're a small community, but we like to have fun. Take care, and deuces.